Hey, what's up guys? We'll just jump right into this one. I'll be building a router table. Um, <clears throat> pretty fun project. Uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to try. Uh, I wanted to do some raised panels and I also um, just wanted to try and make some cabinets, um, some inset drawers, some beaded face frames. Um, so here it is. This is me just <clears throat> beginning to put my face frame together. Um, I just used pocket holes and pocket screws. Um, since I was doing the beaded face frame, a lot of the pieces were only about an inch. So I only put one pocket hole in. I was worried about it twisting, but it didn't really do that too much. Once I got all the pocket holes in and screwed, um, I sanded it down with a random orbital sander. To make the bead molding, um, to match my face frame, which is cherry, I knew I'd have to make it um, because I couldn't buy cherry bead molding and I couldn't find any bead molding for that matter, um, let alone it being cherry to match since I want to do a natural finish on the front of my uh, router table. So the first thing I had to do was get a nice clean edge, <clears throat> which would be on the inside of the drawer front. So I first took it over to the joiner and ran it and got a nice clean edge on the joiner. Once I had a nice clean jointed edge, I was able to come right over to the router table and run it right through um, with the bead molding uh, bit, um, which has an eighth inch radius on it, and was able to put that right along the, uh, the bottom edge of the board there. Um, and it really cut really nice. After I got the bead molding at the bottom of the board, uh, after the router table, I brought it right over to the table saw and was able to um, just rip it off uh, with the table saw. I left it a little bit heavy so then I could bring it over to the planer and then plane it down to the thickness that I wanted which is about 5 16 of an inch uh, was the, uh, the depth that I thought looked uh, the best. I did run into a little bit of uh, tear out issues um, running these little guys through the planer. Um, definitely had to watch my grain orientation. Um, but luckily it was on the, the side that was gonna face uh, the face frame, so you're not really gonna see it except if you look down and you see the little chip out to the wood. Um, but most of it was uh, pretty usable, so just had a couple pieces that were a little bit um, torn out that I couldn't use. But yeah, overall, I was pretty pleased with the, the final result. Uh, the bead molding bit definitely gave a nice, nice smooth finish. Didn't have to do any sanding on it, which was nice. Um, but yeah, it turned out really good. So once I had my bead molding all cut, then I was just sizing it up and just ran it around the inside of all the openings on my cabinet. It does really help to have a um, zero clearance <clears throat> insert made for the uh, chop saw here. I started out gluing and tacking them in with a little brad nailer, um, <clears throat> especially for the larger one there that has the door going to go in it. Um, but later on I just started tacking them because the glue getting annoying and squeezing out. So I just worked my way around each, each opening, just doing one at a time, trying to match up the ends. And as you can see, my face frame has a little bit of a bow into it, so I had to push that down. Pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it adds a nice touch. And I had to break down a large sheet of MDF that I was going to use for the for my raised panels for the center panel. I 
I use the MDF one because it's cheaper um, and it's more stable. It won't expand and contract like normal wood. Um, and it also, I was going to paint it, um, so I decided to be the best way to go. If at all possible, if you could do this outside, I definitely would. As you can see, I had a little shop back hooked up, but that kind of died on me. So I was making a, a serious mess in the basement. Definitely wear a respirator of some sort. There's all my panels cut. And I had to cut out my rail and styles. I ended up just getting some poplar from Lowe's. Probably would have been nicer to mill it up myself, but I didn't feel like going to the lumber yard just for a couple pieces. This is a step that I definitely I learned on. I did backwards. Um, you should cut the copes at the end of the of the rails here, or styles, whichever one it is, um, so you don't get the tear out when you cut the ends. I did it that way when I made the the door, and it, it worked out pretty good. Still worked out this way. As long as you have a board following it to limit how much tear out you'll get, but you do have to do a little bit of sanding to clean it up. So I definitely learned a little bit there. Just making it flush. I did run a couple test pieces um, just to be sure. Ran that piece of MDF behind it just to give it some more stability as I was pushing it through. I wanted them both to be relatively the same height so the panel wouldn't stick out. Just me mocking it up before I glued it. And before I glued it, I actually primed the edges of the MDF because it's a little bit rough there, kind of furry. Um, so I put a couple coats, or one coat, and then I sanded it, and then I did another coat and sanded that before I actually um, put the panels together. You can see in the next picture, I think, or maybe not. Uh, and it is a little rough there, so you do have to sand it. This is where my, my switch is gonna go. <clears throat> so I use my mortar to put a little hole in there. I did use the router then to get that edge around it. As you can see, I'm gluing up my center panel, which you wouldn't usually want to do if you have a solid wood panel because you need it to expand and contract. Um, but since it's MDF, it's not going to expand and contract, and I figured might as well glue it just to give it some more stability and strength in the panel. I am thinking about making a jig to glue up panels because you do have to watch um, and make sure that they are square and the more panels that are in in there it makes it harder but they all want to kind of shift around always working your way around the knots so here I was sizing my panel or my drawer fronts to the openings you can see it's a little crooked there um, so I would get the sides on the miter saw, and then on the tops, I would just use the hand plane and kind of work its way down. I just start from the one end and kind of work my way over. And 
uh, did work pretty good. Try to get consistent gap at the top and the side. I use playing cards to get all my gaps equal. I'm hoping I put enough gap in. I put between three, four, or five card gap. Most of it's around the three and four, which is about one to one and a half millimeters. They're not too big, so I hope they don't expand and contract too much. So I did spray on the primer here, and then I sanded them all down. It only takes a little bit of time to hand sand all your profiles, but definitely worth it. And I'm spraying the paint. Put two different coats. I put one on in the evening here and then uh, the picture so after the second coat in the next morning. Turned out pretty good. I did not put a clear on top. I probably should have, but just kind of left it. This is the wood that I used. Um, that big panel you can get at Lowe's for like 30 or 40 bucks. And it's nice, you know, it has a whole bunch of glue pieces laminated together if you don't mind having a couple, you know, looks like multiple pieces, but for the money it's pretty nice to make drawer sides and out of, if you want to use solid wood. It's pine, but it, it works. For all the drawers, I used a uh, dovetailing jig here to make half-line dovetails. It takes a little bit to kind of understand the jig and get a system, but once you get it going, it works pretty good, actually. My first couple drawers would take me about 45 minutes till I cut it and put it all together. By the end, it was like 15 minutes <clears throat> getting to a good system. It was nice using the pine because it kind of compressed and snugged up real good. Didn't have to worry about it cracking or fraying too much. Checking for a relative square. I wasn't gluing them up at the time. Here I'm routing the groove for the bottom of the drawer. I used quarter inch plywood for all the small drawers. And then for the bottom large drawer, I used half inch. You just want to make sure you don't route out into one of your um, pins of your dovetail. Or else it'll show. Here's me just assembling. Kind of have to work quickly. Else it'll drew the glue will start setting before you kind of get it square. So I just labeled the fronts, which are the best looking dovetails. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I will have part two out soon, so feel free to watch the finished project there.